Our trip to Manchester had a lot to live up to, following our incredible food tour of Birmingham. We're going to be showcasing not just the food side of things, but also the other landmarks to hit because this was also our first time to the city. We start off in Salford, situated above the Curry House and Nairs on Monton Road, is a charming little eatery called Brunchville. They are a fully established halal breakfast and brunch place, and this is what we recommend. Where east meets west, you have the brunch board, a desi breakfast with tikka paneer, masala chana, and a spicy omelette, served with a pair of paratas. They have a number of desserts, but what we really enjoyed was the Brunchville Lotus Biscoff French Toast. With berries, cream, strawberries, and a thick French toast, the flavours here were on point and highly recommended. After this we went into Manchester to the curry mile where they had many halal options but what we went for was Don Taco's Mexican Grill. They're an authentic Mexican restaurant in Rush Home. They offer a fully halal Mexican street food. Although a small joint, this had plenty of character with a colourful Tex-Mex interior. They also had the Don waiting for your order. And what we recommend is the Birria Tacos. They were the first ones to bring it into Manchester. Four corn tacos filled with homemade beef with lots of cheese grilled and served in a unique Berea sauce. I'm telling you these are 5 out of 5 and if you haven't had these before you need to go down and try them because we're definitely missing them here in London. To wash it all down we went down the road to Gong Jai and took our drinks down to Manchester Central. So Manchester has a number of all day parking spots and we were going to the museum or science and industry and just outside it was Castlefield Canals. These were the first canals to link the Irish Sea and the Northern Sea and just around the corner from that was Roman Manchester. This is where Manchester began. And then we've got Roman Manchester over the past 100 years archaeologists excavating in Castlefield have gradually uncovered the remains of Roman Manchester. Behind you in the Roman Gardens some of these remains have been rebuilt. These include a reconstruction of the north gate of the Roman fort and the foundation of three Roman buildings set outside the fort next to a Roman road to the south. The Science and Industry Museum in Manchester traces the development of science, technology and industry with emphasis on the city's achievement in the fields. It was free entry and definitely worth a visit which gives you the history of Manchester from technology, computers and mills. After building up an appetite we went to First Street where they had Feed the Lions end of year award winning restaurant Ribeye Steakhouse which has the distinction of introducing Manchester's first dry bar. Located over two floors, this place has done wonders for the Manchester halal food scene. The head chef Jafar boasts two decades of experience and this can be seen in his whole cuisine. It's no wonder they got 5 out of 5 being Feed the Lions restaurant of the year. Hi, my name is Jafar, head chef of Ribeye Steakhouse. I've been here since opening obviously and keep going and uh, looking to welcome you uh, to our restaurant anytime. No matter what steak you get, you'll be happy with it. We recommend the Wagyu ribeye, 3 to 400 days corn fed, grade A plus, cooked on the Himalayan stone salt, with char grilled beef bone marrow, with sriracha seasoning. Another thing to try is the beef ribs. They won start of the year for Feed the Lions end of year awards, and they're marinated for 24 hours in their own spice mix, and slow cooked for 8 hours without doubt the best beef ribs we've ever had. After that, seeking something sweet, we went to Biscuits, an independently run dessert parlour in Withington. This family run restaurant did wonders with the interior alone. They had all your well known classics from waffles, crepes, tarts, apple crumble, roly poly, pancakes, but what we enjoyed was a heavenly waffle with Belgian milk chocolate, Oreo crumb, Ferrero Rocher and flake. That was the end of day one where we visited four restaurants which lead us to day two starting with Jaiwala on Cheatham Hill. Jaiwala need no introduction being the Indian Starbucks. While everyone's been here before, you probably haven't tried this exclusive to this particular branch off the menu. If you request it, they will put butter chicken in your omelette. Yes, it has the parata, spicy beans, lentils, which takes the desi breakfast to a whole new level which we thoroughly enjoyed. And we were thinking, why isn't this on every Jaiwala menu? After Jaiwala, we had lots of time to burn so we went to Manchester Central. We had a great time walking around the city centre. Manchester is full of halal and halal friendly restaurants. With numerous landmarks to see, there we discovered John Wyland's Research Institute and Library. But it was this modern architecture that intrigued us. We wanted to go down to find out what it was all about. Ultimately, we had no idea what we were going to get ourselves into, only to find out it was a really posh restaurant. So we asked them the ultimate question, was it halal? Unfortunately, they said no, so we left and went to the library. So this venue is a late Victorian non-Gothic building on Dean's Gate. It's part of the University of Manchester, the library that's open to the public in the 1900s and you can see students still using the facility. 
They had numerous rooms, printing press. This was more than a library, it was also a museum. And they were showcasing the Qing Empire, the last dynasty in China. There was so much to see here, they even had a section on Islam in China. Entry was free and if you haven't been, it's definitely worth going. Especially if you like your history and architecture. We even paid a visit to the Portico Library and Gallery on Mosley Street. It's an independent subscription library, but you can walk in, have a look at the interior and read the books. It's great to see a library founded in 1806 still used today. For late lunch we went down to Wimsor Road to Pitmaster Barbecue and Smokehouse. We heard the reputation of this place and were eager to go down to this. This was arguably the strongest 5 out of 5 restaurant we've ever encountered. No matter what you get you'll be happy with, but we recommend you get the Smoked Brisket Melt which is Feed the Lions Burger of the Year award winner. It's 16 hour smoked premium brisket served with Montreal Jack cheese, hot nacho sauce, jalapenos and gherkins. And with premium brisket, they nailed the most important part of the burger. And to finish off the tour we went next door to Heavenly Desserts. And they must be doing something right because they're opening up in every part of the UK. They do all the classics from milk cakes, waffles, cheesecakes, crepes, sundaes, gelato ice cream, tarts, cakes and a whole lot more. But what caught our eye was a croffle which is a cross between a waffle and a croissant. If you haven't tried it before, it's worth trying. You even get a scoop of gelato ice cream, so what's not to like? That was the end of the tour of Manchester. All in all, Manchester has a very impressive halal food scene. Thanks to our sponsor, Zanti, which specializes in non-alcoholic drinks and advocating a sober lifestyle. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We got more tours uploading soon, including the Bradford tour and a whole lot more.